Hello, everybody, and whoa, I'm not even looking at the right camera today because my monitor is on a different spot. So, um, welcome to today's Storytelling Saturday. I'm Michael Gracia. Um, so, I'm just setting up here. I did not realize I still had, you don't need my name up today. Uh, and I do apologize for a little bit of the mess you see in the background. My other camera that I normally use isn't working today. Um, I don't know why. It's right over here. Uh, I'm going to try to switch again just one more time to see. I might go black. Let's see. Who knows? Um, cam mic. Camera. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, well. We're going to go back to, back to here. There's no... Whoops. Allow. Yeah, so... I don't know what happened, um, or why my camera's like that, but it's not going to be a big deal. We're not even going to be, I'm not going to be really using my camera today. Um, what I wanted to do is discuss, and I know this is this very messy studio behind me. It's really bugging me out. Um, what I wanted to do is discuss my, um, my work in Photoshop, and I'm going to open up Photoshop in a moment. I just want to fix this so I can tell what I'm looking at here, and it looks like I'm looking at the screen here. Um, so as a, uh, as a cartoonist, the digital artist, uh, I tend to do a lot of... Uh, uh, I, I use a lot of, obviously, digital equipment. Um, I don't know if I can bend the camera down a bit. You can see I have my Cintiq right here. This is my primary tool for for drawing. Um, it's a, For those who don't know what the Cintiq is, it is a tablet monitor. Um, sorry, just making sure I got everything right there. It is a tablet monitor that allows me to move a stylus around and draw on it and it works the stylus whoops the stylus acts like a mouse and uh yeah so what i got here open is photoshop i'll share the screen in a moment uh so you guys can see it let me bring up the camera a little bit more all right so yeah, I tend to do a lot of different things with uh, uh, digitally. Um, you know, I've done animation. I use Adobe Animate. I use After Effects. I tend to use uh, Adobe Premiere. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Adobe uh, suite. Uh, I also use Clip Studio Paint when I work. But for me, Clip Studio Paint, uh, setting it up, I always have issues with. I don't mind creating my templates in something like Photoshop and then uh, bring it into another program to do my artwork. But I'm going to show you today my techniques for using uh, Photoshop for creating a template and how I use the template for when I create comics. All right. So let's switch over to Photoshop so you can see it right from the beginning. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So now you guys are seeing what I see in Photoshop, and I'm just going to make Photoshop the full screen because you don't need to see me in this. You just need my voice. So there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Create New. And because it's a comic, I want to work on 11 by 17. That's traditional drawing so i'm going to turn whoops let me turn this to inches first and i'm going to take this here and make that 11. i'm going to make the height 17. okay and i'm going to make the resolution 300 for now and the color 
I'm going to make, uh, I could do it in grayscale or I could do it in um, CMYK if it's meant to be print. So let me just mention a few things. Uh, you guys aren't seeing the, the setup here, right? Why is that? I don't know. This is weird. Okay. So anyway, I got, um, you know, let me just create a new document first and I'll talk about it. Let's see. Does a new document open up? Okay. So you do see the new document. All right. So I don't know why you weren't seeing the other stuff. Let's see. Okay. Sometimes I got to click on it. Let me try something again. Let me come here. Menu. Okay. And I'm going to come back and click on the screen here. I don't know why this happens, but. Um, okay. So you're not seeing it. So I'll just do some writing on this piece here. So let me cancel out of here and give you guys some, some tips. So the first thing you want to know is, and I'll, and I'll remake this template. I don't understand why the template's not coming up or you're not seeing the, uh, the, the create menu or I'm not seeing it. Maybe you are. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me in the comments next time I open it, but I just want to talk about a few things. So first off, um, all right. Normal comic book drawing paper traditionally is 11 by 17. So this is the width. This is the height. Okay. Now we have a drawing size in here that is 10 by 15. All right. So we got 10 by uh, 11 by 17. We draw on 10 by 15. Uh, and I'm going to talk about traditional stuff the way I was taught. So the gutter, oops, come on. So the gutter, what is going on here? Could not use the brush tool because this, oh my God. Uh, so I'm having some issues today. I just, I just cleaned my computer the other day. And now it's telling me I can't use it. So let me do, let me try something. Sorry, guys, I do apologize. Don't save. Ah, let's go to create new. I'm going to lower my resolution. So it's just good for the screen. Maybe that'll help. Okay, I'm going to set it to grayscale. Let's create. Let's get a new layer and okay, seems to work now. All right, so let's go over this again and I'll redo it. So, whoops, got too big of a brush now. Okay, so I know it's blurry. I'll explain why in a moment. So 11 by 17 is the width and the height. Okay, so that's 11, that's 17. And everything I'm talking about is traditionally, you know, what comic artists use or what we were taught to use. And our drawing size is 10 by 15. Now, the gutter is the space in between the panels. So if I have a panel like this, a panel like this, and a big panel like this, the gutter is right here and right here. All right? Traditionally, I'm not saying people don't use different numbers, but traditionally going back to old, old school ways of working, it's 0.25 inches. So a quarter of an inch. All right? So when we're setting this up, we have resolution. So what is resolution? Okay, you might hear it as, you might hear something called high res or low res. 
Right now, I'm drawing at low res, and I'm going to explain that. You're going to hear a term called DPI, which equals dots per inch. Now, if you hear the term, if you hear the term um, PPI, is just pixels per inch. So you can hear PPI, which is just pixels per inch. And you're going to hear this. This is for web, maybe, whoops, didn't mean that. Maybe video. I'll just write this here. This is for print. Okay? So the way this works, and I'm taking off my brace for a moment. I might put it, have to put it back on. But the way this works is a low res is 72, 150. High res is 300 plus. Okay? Now, what this means is that in every inch, like on a low res, let's say, the 72, there are 72 dots. So there's little dots that make up the color, that make up the image. So that means there's 72 dots that make up one box, one inch of color space. When you go to 300 or higher, that means you have 300 pixels or 300 dots that are making up the, the space of color, which is why it looks so much cleaner. Now, everybody's home printer, unless they have a special printer, everybody's home printer, the most common... You go to Staples, Best Buy, wherever, and you buy a printer. That's going to be 300 DPI. If you print anything lower, you'll notice sometimes you'll print stuff off the web. And when you print stuff off the web, it kind of looks kind of like there's like these grays or these weird marks, and it just looks fuzzy. That's because the, the, the web holds low-res files, and the printer is this, so... Where the printer is trying to print up 300 dots per inch, it's really only printing up 72, and it doesn't look right. Okay? So when we're creating, and obviously I'm having some issues with my computer today, which would have been nice to know before I tried this. So what's, what is important to know is when you're creating your template, because for some reason you guys couldn't see it. So when we're making our template, what's going on here? You want it to be 11, whoops, why am I writing an H? <laughs> an 11 by 17, okay, inch. We're going to want to hold it, we're going to have the box up like this. I want to, so that's portrait. I'm spelling it wrong, right? Portrait, yep. Terrible speller here. Okay. 11 by 17 portrait. You want your, your resolution to equal 300 or higher. Now, you get your choice of whatever you want. Okay? However big you want to make it, it doesn't matter to me. 300 or higher. Uh, 300 is the lowest you want to go. Okay, and if this is meant to be printed, uh, not printed, but to be on web, I recommend working at 300 DPI. Now, for your color, okay, RGB equals web or, or video. Okay, this right here stands for red, green, and blue. What happens on these right here is these are the colors used on the screen to make other colors. You also have C, M, Y, K. This is for print. All right. I always work in C, M, Y, K. All right. Uh, or I'll work in grayscale if there's not going to be color. Grayscale will just keep the file size smaller. So it stands for cyan magenta yellow whoops 
yellow. And what a lot of people think the K stands for is black, right? What I was taught, and if anybody out there watching knows anything different, I was taught that K equals key. And your key color is always black. Okay? That's what I was taught. I don't know if that's 100% accurate, um, but it's what I was taught. So what you want to do is you want to create a template again. So in Photoshop, 11 by 17 portrait, your resolution 300 DPI or higher, minimum 300, and your color should always be CMYK or grayscale when you're just drawing. I recommend changing your color later, but being in CMY, uh, being in um, in grayscale, if you're just drawing and using uh, what's the word I'm looking for, using uh, you know penciling and inking, um, it's okay to be in uh, it's okay to be in grayscale because we're just going to use different shades of of gray. Or if you really want, you could be in RGB or just get the sharpest black you can because a CMYK black is a little duller than uh, RGB or grayscale black, all right? So I'm gonna make a new document now, and I'm gonna keep, and because I'm having some issues with my computer right now, and I'm, I'm uh, honestly, I'm in the process of, of gonna be building a new one soon. I'm, I'm gonna be, it's one of those things where it's kind of sad to say, but I'm gonna be leaving Mac and going back to PC because I, I don't have, you know, I use a PC, uh, you know, sometimes, and I find PCs have less, issues than Max do. And that's weird because it used to be the reverse. So I'm going to work. Hopefully this will let me. I'm going to work um, at a low resolution just because of my computer issues. It's going to be 150. And I'm going to go on RGB because you guys are watching this on the web, but I still have 11 by 17. So I created a new document and I don't know why I'm having these... Um, guidelines pop up. So let me just get rid of them because we are going to make guidelines and I don't want my own guidelines in here. I think this just might be defaulted off something else I'm working with. Um, all right. So, and, and by the way, I know there's the debate out there. Um, you know, traditional versus digital. I'm for both. I, I don't, I, I think they work well together. I do a lot of my work on pencil first and bring it into the computer. But when I'm working digitally, this is the process I'm going to show you that I'm working with. Excuse me. So what I like to do when I first start off, and huh, it's interesting that you can't see. I'm going to try a different type of share. Let me see if this works, okay? I'm going to stop my share screen here. And I'm going to, whoops, wrong thing. I'm going to reshare. But I want to share my whole screen if I can. Um, screen two. Because I want to. I want you guys only... Okay, let's see. Allow. So, okay, now you guys are seeing my, my menu. So the first... Uh, and stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this tool below the, uh, below the move tool. It's called the marquee tool. And there's different types of, you know, elliptical or rectangular. I want to make sure I'm using the rectangular marquee tool. And I want to go up to where it says, um, whoops, I got a layer. So where it says style at the top menu here, I want to go down to fixed size. And I want to go, I already have it set up. So I wrote 10 IN in the width and 15 IN in the height. And what that does is just create a box. And I just click on the on the menu. And for now, I'm just going to choose a, a light gray. And I'm going to use my fill tool to fill it in. And then I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to... I'm using key commands here to help me move faster. And what I want to do... And if you have on your your view, your, your, your snap-on, this will help you snap automatically centered. All right. What I also like to do, and um, on you know, so I have on one layer here. I have whoops. I have one layer. I'm going to call gray. And this layer here, I'm going to call border. 
And on this one here, I want to um, go back to the marquee tool, click on it. It doesn't matter if it's exactly over because I'll move it later. And I want to go to black and go up to edit uh, down to stroke. And I, you know, this is whatever you want your panel thickness to be. So I'm going to choose six right now. And I'm going to want it on the inside. I, you can choose center, outside, whatever you like. For this, I want to use it on the inside because what it does is it fills around it. So if you go on the outside, it's going to break the 10 by 15 by a couple of pixels. Staying on the inside, it kind of shrinks it a bit. So I'm going to click OK. And now if I deselect, OK, that looks actually pretty good where it's moved over, right? Um, I could, whoops, undo. And just so I'm moving, the only thing I'm going to lock this layer for a moment. So I know it's perfect. All right. And I'm going to lock that layer too. The reason I want these layers locked is because I'm really not going to do much to them. These are just kind of helping me guide where I'm going to draw. All right. So this is the first part of my template. Now, you can start drawing on this and and uh, you know obviously create a new layer and i'm gonna choose a different color um like let's say i get some this reddish color and i can start and i'm gonna choose a different pencil um not there now these are all the kyle brushes i uh i had these installed way before uh adobe bought the kyle t brushes and my favorite brush to use sometimes it takes a moment to find is the animator pencil, all right? So I'll choose this, and if I wanted to, I can kind of start coming on and bordering out things and drawing, and hey, here's a guy, and woo, you know, whatever, here he is, white. Oh my God. So I'm having the same issue, my scratch disc is full. So today is not a good day to be doing a stream. I really need to go to PC. Uh, I, I literally spent I don't know how many hours the other day cleaning up this computer, removing stuff off of it uh, so it can run better. And uh, now I'm having issues here. So let me just forget this and make the actual template for you. And this is what I do. Okay. So on here, we have gutter space. Now, as I mentioned, gutter space is normally a quarter of an inch in thickness and that's the traditional um that's the traditional one you could have you can have it smaller larger you know what i want you to remember though is that we are this is going to get scaled down no one ever ever draws at you know uh prints at this size we always shrink it down and then and traditionally get actual comic book size it's about a 64 percent um uh scale so if this is 100%, we scale it down 64% or to 64%. And uh, then you got that 6 by 10 comic, uh, comic size. So what I like to do, and I will then show you how I organize this. I like to go back to the marquee tool. And my width, uh, for now, because I'm going to do the ones across, are going to be, um, if it's 10... I'm going to do 10.5, and the height is going to be 0.25 inches. Okay, so if I click, now obviously it's larger, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with white, okay? And then... Oh, whoops. Let me do it this way. I don't know why Photoshop is doing it that way. Edit. Fill. Why is it not taking the... Oh, because the border is above it. I'm sorry. That's me being foolish. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke it. And I'm going to stroke it the same, the same height, but change the color to black. And if you want to go smaller, you can. Uh, oh, because the layer's locked. I'm sorry. 
Edit stroke. Everything. There we go. Now I can't do it because the scratch discs are still full. So it looks like today is going to be a flop for me, which is very sad because I was looking forward to doing this. Anyway, what I do, and maybe I could do it with the pencil tool real quick, is... Yeah, I can't even see my my stuff here. Yep. Okay, so today is going to be a flop for me. Anyway, what I end up doing now, and I'll explain it, is I, I literally chop off... I, I put a border around this, this long, thin box, and then I use the marquee tool to... And I'll zoom in if I can. Hopefully, it'll let me do that. Okay. And then what I do... I can't even move it. Wow. Today is not working out for me. Oh, there it goes. So I take the marquee tool, and I just... Oh, I'm going to remove it. I probably won't be able to do this, but I'm going to remove it um, and go to normal in, under here, and I'm going to select right up to the edge, right up to that black edge, and it won't let me, and then I delete the extra white and the extra black. You know what? I'm going to have to end today, unfortunately, and I'll do this again another day. I don't know why I'm having this this many issues. I got to fix this computer again. I guess I got to go through it. Like I literally spent all day um, Thursday wiping stuff off, cleaning stuff off. I, I, I don't know why my computer is not working today. I have nothing else open but my stream yard in Photoshop. Uh, so I'm going to have to look at allocating memory somewhere else. Um, you know what, guys? I do apologize. If I can come on later today and do it after I clean up, I promise you I will. Uh, otherwise, let's just... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set this up for another day, but I need to... Uh, um, you know, I need to be able to work. It's weird because, you know, right now you're seeing most of my studio, which is a mess. Usually I use this camera here, which isn't working today. So something's up with my equipment. Something's up with, uh, with the computer. Um, so I guess next time, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, everything was working yesterday when I was doing my art and setting up my cameras and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it, fix it, and if I can come back today, I'll come back today. If I can't, hopefully next week I'll go over this. And, uh, you know, for those who tuned in, thanks a lot. I do appreciate it. Uh, come come see me. Um, let me get my phone. I'll tell you. I forgot, I forgot how to say the guy's name. But come see me on, on Tuesday night for my regular Get in Tune, where my guest will be... The writer and artist Mike Belcher, who um, who is known for uh, Man in the Man in the Mask, he's the letter and production designer at Silverline Comics for a bunch of their titles, and artist on forthcoming graphic novel and pulp character The Black Bat, written by Ron. Is that Fortier? We're gonna hear a lot from him. I'm I'm actually um, and I'm sorry, I'm just bad with names, which is why I'm looking it up. But I'm actually a fan of. Mike's work. Uh, I've seen it a while back. And, you know, recent, I'd say within the last few months, maybe a little longer, we connected on social media. And I love what I'm seeing. He's always posting a lot of DC characters, which is fun for me because I'm a big DC guy. But he also um, does it in a style that's reminiscent of like the Golden slash Silver Age. Uh, it, it kind of, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to compare it to Darwin Cook, but you can kind of see, I see Darwin Cook influence in there, Alex Toth, you know, those, those a little more simpler, stylized, less is more really seems to be the influence on there. And it's the kind of stuff I love to look at. Um, I have, I believe I've read the first issue of, uh, Man in the Mask. I have to look again. I, I think I have a digital copy of it I, I got somewhere. Um, I'll check that out. 
And but you guys really uh, check it out. It's called The Man in the Mask. I believe it might be on Indie Planet. If you want to look that up, maybe it's free, maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, if it's not, pay the money. It's definitely. I I think it's worth it. I enjoyed the first issue. Um, so yeah, sadly, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to wrap up because I'm having technical issues uh, today, and I got to figure out what's going on because I can't do any of my work without my computer working. So, thank you guys for tuning in. I will, uh, I will hopefully come back later today and do this after I get some work done. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'll show this template another time. I do apologize. Um, you know, but tune in on on Tuesday night for uh, for Mike Mike. Did I say it's Belchler? I'm sorry, I'm bad bad with names. But fantastic artist, love his work, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, thanks for thanks for hanging out, guys. I'm sorry I had some technical issues. We will get back to back to doing it. I promise. All right. Um, have a great day. Bye, guys.